Welcome to the Maths Made Easy tutorial on data sampling and questionnaires. So this part of the video will be entirely about questionnaires. Uh, so what separates a good questionnaire from a bad questionnaire? Uh, well to answer this question let's come up with an example. So let's say we want to find out uh, how often people exercise. Uh, so we could just pose the question how often do you exercise and leave a, a blank response. Uh, but the purpose of a questionnaire is to gather useful data. So in order to gather some useful information from our question, we need to make sure that the results are all comparable to one another. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is add a time frame. Uh, so let's say the question is going to be how many times, so we're adding a time frame here, so it could be per week or per month or per day, uh, but the question is about exercise, so let's choose a suitable time frame of one week. So how many times per week do you exercise? So this forms the question part of our questionnaire. Uh, so now we need some response boxes. Uh, now it's important that you have a good amount of response boxes. You don't just want one or two, because uh, if we had uh, the response boxes as I don't exercise or I exercise more than once, then you're not really getting any useful information from the questionnaire. Uh, so let's add five response boxes. So our question is asking people how many times per week they exercise. Uh, so what if someone doesn't exercise at all? Well, they, they need a response box. So the first one should be zero. Now, if we move on, uh, we can't have zero to one as our next response box uh, because that has some overlap and the same if we had one to two. So for instance, if someone did one hour of exercise, would they tick this box or would they tick this box? Uh, we don't know. So we can't have any kind of ambiguity in the response boxes. There can't be any overlap. Uh, so the first one, or sorry, the second box should be one to two times per week. And then the next one after that should be three to four times per week. And then five to six. Uh, but then for the last one, I'm not gonna put the uh, response as seven to eight times per week. Instead, I'm gonna go for seven or more. And the reason for that uh, is it needs to be open-ended because what if someone exercises 14 times a week? Uh, they need a box to tick as well. So in this simple questionnaire, we've covered pretty much everything. So if someone does no exercise, they know which box to tick. It's the one on the left. If someone exercises four times a week, there's only one box that they would tick, and that's this one. And if you exercise 10 times a week, uh, you know which box to tick. So every option is included, and there's also a very good amount of options. So from this questionnaire, we can collect some quite useful data. So there's a couple of other things we can point out in this questionnaire or in questionnaires in general. And the first is that the question should be entirely clear. So there's only one way that you could interpret this question. Uh, so in our question, we could actually improve this uh, because this questionnaire depends on your definition of exercise. So someone might include walking, for instance, as exercise and another person might not. And that's likely to affect the result. Uh, so we could change it to how many times per week do you do intense exercise and that would kind of remove any kind of ambiguity. Uh, and then another thing you need to consider, and this is especially important if you have uh, questionnaires based on opinions, is that your question cannot be a leading question. So for instance, if the questionnaire was about uh, your opinions on the government, uh, then you couldn't have a question along the lines of, do you think the government will be a disaster? Because that might pressure someone into uh, answering in a particular way. If you'd like to get some practice with some questionnaires exam style questions, you can do so with our online exam. It's available through our revision platform. And if you take the test, you'll find a variety of different questions, loads of different question types as well, and you get instant feedback on everything. Uh, so if you're interested and you want to take the test, then you can click the link below, it will take you straight there.